Welcome back to another episode of We Escalate. I am the producer and co-host, Victor Escalate. Joining me in the studio is Vicky Cruz. Vicky, say hi to our followers. Hey, followers. Hey, USA. Hey, everyone. Today, we are talking about a very timely topic uh, that uh, I recently started to poll company owners and, and company uh, middle managers and upper managers in big corporations asking one question. What is the single one challenge that you are faced with in the marketplace today? And over and over, the overwhelming response has been recruitment. Recruitment of talent, retention, and keeping a motivated workforce. So that's what we're gonna talk about today because I have been in this space as a corporate consultant uh, doing recruitment of key positions, as well as Vicky. Vicky has been uh, in different uh, HR positions that she was responsible for the recruitment and for the training of talent to keep them engaged and motivated, which apparently appears to be a serious problem in corporations. Vicky, what have you heard in out in the community and talking with some of the corporate people that you interact with? Well, that everything you just said and above. Um, but a second area too, Victor, is the culture. Yes. You know, because of the turnover that's happening, you know, turnover has skyrocketed. And, you know, these three years, past three years, um, even, you know, greater after COVID, uh, the pandemic. Uh, but even prior to that, and then now more so, culture or a lot you know the alignment of the culture and the teams and what have you is it's a problem so let me uh talk about that let's do a little deeper dive because i attended a an event yesterday at the sbdc the small business uh, center uh, for u of h they had as a guest speaker the the owner of three men uh, movers uh, this is a CEO that took a company that her father started from three million to forty million. Okay, so uh, this is a hands-on uh, CEO that the way she built the company that she credits it is by building a culture that people wanted to work there, and the number one strategy that she used uh, the single strategy that she credits the growth of the company was hiring people that are accountable. Hiring people that they already bring this to the table as part of their work ethic, part of their mindset, because her philosophy is if I have to hold you accountable, I'm coddling uh, bad behaviors as opposed to you being self-motivated and you holding yourself responsible and working in a team that is going to work and expect you to be accountable for your actions and, and your commitments to the team and to the company. And I totally concur because, again, we have lost a work ethic, and especially post-COVID, that people don't want to work. People no longer have the same mindset that uh, maybe they never did before COVID, that they would just continue to work at a company and and just draw a paycheck and, you know, just retire from there, uh, hoping that nothing bad happens. But look at what happened uh, as a result of COVID. It's like it totally upended our way of living, uh, the supply chain, our mindset. I mean, we had people dying, literally dying as a result of, of uh, this pandemic that uh, that it was totally democratic. It didn't matter what color you were, what uh, political affiliation you were, people beyond 20 years. So, uh, so Vicky, talk about accountability. When you were in HR and in recruitment, what sort of metrics or, or what sort of processes did you create or work with in order to hold people accountable? Well, it was always the performance management. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the organizations that we worked with had, you know, robust tools to to manage and hold um, workers accountable, you know, through performance management. And, um, 
you know, so whether it was quarterly, whether it was, you know, biannually, uh, it, they they had to happen, you know, for what these performance management had to take place. And um, now, you know, uh, just the vibe that people give off of in meetings and in uh, performance reviews and then looking at their metrics when someone is really uh, walking their talk and really committed to uh, to doing the job that they were hired for, uh, uh, because there's only so much that you can uh, you can fake. Uh, I know Vicky in leading teams uh, in different corporations that I could tell who the the genuine people that were motivated and that were hard workers and that I could rely on, and who the scragglers were that that it was just a matter of time before I had to get rid of them. And that was a very interesting uh, point that that this lady, uh, th- uh, the founder of, uh, or the owner of uh, Three Men Moving Company, said that hire people that are self-accountable and fire people that quickly, that are not uh, a good fit for the company. So back to my question to you, is you can tell who's on board and who's not. What sort of vibe did you look for? What sort of uh, nuance did you did you experience in working with different individuals that you could tell that they were not going to be a good fit? Well, I think it always starts, and I'm not. It's it. It just depends on the position, right? Right. When you're talking about the nuance and what have you, you we have to look at the management. We've got to look at the supervisors. We got to look at the hiring manager that's basically evaluating and having a good professional staff. Having a you know whether it's a HR team, a recruiter that's going to educate and consult the hiring manager as to what to look for, not just to hire any warm body just to sit, you know, right. sit the seat. So there's got to definitely be coaching that takes place when the manager is going to hire, um, but also to really understand the position and the alignment of what that person, you know, soft skills and hard skills are to match that employee. So you know, there's times and I've seen it, it happens over and over pre-COVID. What I would see is that um, you, you have to understand the culture, Victor. We go back to culture, right? You have to like understand. Like Peter Drucker said, culture eats strategy every day, Correct. every time. Correct. And so when we understand the culture and you're making that placement for the right person for the team, it's it's understanding what are those goals, what are the values, not just of the team and the person and individuals in itself, but aligning it to the company's mission, their 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 vision statement, and just you know connecting the dots. Right. You know, looking at the person's past experiences, looking at the person's why. You've got to recruit in every facet, every level, understanding you know that person's why, looking at their job history because their job history will tell you everything. Better. Right. You know, looking at their resume and saying, okay, so why did you leave this company? Oh, for a dollar. Yeah. Why did you leave this company for 50 cents? Yeah. That is not acceptable. You just don't just leave companies. And when you see the trends and what and why people leave an organization and you do not equip or educate your managers as to what to look for, you're failed. You, they've got to be able to look and listen, you know, and ask the right questions questions when it comes to staffing the position, you know, because if you don't make that perfect match or be- be- better yet is to ask the person how, you know, the va- the the viable questions around um, scenarios, you know, how do you, you know, scenarios, you know, and so basically in this situation, um, you know, that we talked about, there's many facets, you know, it's not just in, in where you know, we hired the wrong person. Is the per- no, 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 no. It basically stops from. It starts from the top. So you get from the top. Yeah. So you got to train the the recruiters uh, on how to develop that sixth sense that lets you know beyond what's on paper what the person is not telling you by looking at their history, uh, by how they answer certain questions. So, for example, in recruiting for key positions, one of the questions that I ask is tell me about an experience that gave you trouble, okay? What I'm looking for specifically in asking that question is not necessarily what they tell me, but how they answer. It's like, do they go into a stress response that uh, they are so focused on, on what the problem was that they were tackling with 
that they begin almost to go into a light trance that uh, that that is a predictor of how they're going to deal with future problems in the position as opposed to someone that is a little more rational that is a little more separated from the experience that can talk about it without necessarily sinking into the emotion and reconnecting with the experience because I once recruited for a law firm and in in recruiting a, an attorney when I asked her that question, she actually started crying. She started crying, and I knew she would not be a good fit. Uh, they decided uh, to second-guess my decision, and sure enough, she didn't work out because, again, she was always stressed out because the culture of the company was very stressful, very demanding, short deadlines uh, for uh, different uh, projects, uh, legal processes. And so, uh, so there's an art to interviewing and screening candidates. And what we're seeing right now is a lot of AI tools that are automatically used for screening. And sometimes they are not going to necessarily give you the best candidates. Well, of course not. If they don't know what the the AI tools, don't know what the actual problems are. Yes. You know, where are those gaps, you know, to understand what kind of person, you know, what kind of talent you're going to need. Not just the person, but the talent. We're looking for talent. That's what we're paying for. You know, uh, we're paying for values. We're paying for, you know, how are these people going to work? Are they going to call in? You call in, you know, you know that there's an issue with um, employment um, show up, yeah. right? And so you know that it could be just at any spur of the moment, someone's going to call in. So you've got to make sure you've got somebody who's got that flexibility to come in so the numbers will be met. Because at the end game, Victor, it's about the numbers. What? Yes, totally. Uh, one of the things that uh, that they brought out, one of the things that they brought out yesterday at the meeting was uh, was character, hiring for character, hiring for for someone that already comes uh, wired, for lack of a better term, mentally wired to have that strong grit, that work ethic, that through thick and thin they're going to work, and they're go- because they have the character. They're going to be able to get the job done regardless of what obstacles that they're faced with. And so this is something important. There's something to be said about that. It's like, what is the character that this person has developed in their their work journey that they bring to your company? Uh, what are your thoughts about character? The personality traits, absolutely. There are you know several types of assessments that you know, many companies, depending on the size of the company that will go out and, you know, and whenever recruiters come out as well, you know, there's definitely um, knowing your position and what kind of personality and character you need is very essential. You know, you've got to know um, and understand the role in itself. You know, if you're going to be a customer service, you know, what kind of personality, if they're going to be in sales, what's it going to take? How are you going to really um, get your customers to buy in um, to 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 bring in those numbers again. Right. And so it just, it's, again, it's all, it's all, it's the job. It's the duties, Victor. The matching of the uh, match of, of, it. of what the candidate has, that Versus. it is either a match for the position and the culture of the company, or it's a mismatch. Mm-hmm. So, so again, especially for key positions that you cannot afford to get it wrong because uh, you're dealing with proprietary knowledge that could end up in the hands of your competitor or you're dealing with someone that drives uh, many thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars, in budgets that they have to manage. And so you got to get it right. Yeah, absolutely. One other thing, too, I think that once, um, you know, in the HR world, I've seen many managers who just don't have enough, um, let's say, grace, right? They, It's just one of these issues where, um, or patience, you know, it's just kind of cut them, cut them loose. And that's the best thing. And, and and sometimes it's not, you know, it's taking the time. No, because you end up hiring the same kind of person exactly. if you don't understand uh, the kind of person that you hired. Let me give you an example. Years ago, uh, when I was first learning uh, neurolinguistics, because neurolinguistics has a very strong application to HR, they gave us the example of Southwest Airlines. Southwest Airlines in the past, if you ever flown with uh, with Southwest, you begin to see that cookie cutter look to where they all sound alike and they all act alike uh, because of their personality because 
they hired someone in my field to come in and do a personality profile of your best uh, airline uh, assistants, flight attendants, and they cr created a composite to be able to come up with the ideal candidate for Southwest Airlines. Here's what was happening. 5% of their flight attendants were generating something like 90% of all customer complaints. And in, in doing the assessment, in doing the study, what they discovered was that a lot of these people that were generating complaints should have never been hired for that position because they were too internally referenced. Internally referenced means that the person is never uh, questioned themselves about being wrong. They have this strong sense of being right all the time because, again, that's where they reference to whenever some disagreement arises or whether there's some stressor, they always look inside uh, to, to be able to come up with the answer or the explanation. And so they brought in this consultant because they thought, well, we'll just get rid of those 5% uh, flight attendants. But the question that arose is, what if we end up hiring the same kind of persons? And so, again, you got to know the kinds of people that are creating the discord within the company that are that are not really performing up to speed so that you selectively uh, eliminate those kinds of candidates if they ever end up applying for the position or with your company. Yeah, I agree, Victor. That's, that's a very good point there. Um, something else we had talked about earlier was, um, you know, the, the whole remote situation after COVID. Yes, that's yeah. a big one because uh, because. Remote workers uh, under duress, we had no other choice. But some people in some companies ended up having a hybrid work environment to where you could either work from home or you could come into the office or you could come some days to the office and some days not. That created its own set of problems because now you were no longer part of the culture because let's face it, you need to be present in the office to really understand and really get a feel for the how the political winds are blowing within the company to know how to pivot and how to position yourself because if you're not there you're just a number and and under when budgets are reviewed uh numbers are easily cut that's it like nothing like there's no value because what happens then i mean we talked about it earlier you know employees are not connected and when employees are not connected, there's no value in the organization. There's no value in uh, the work. There's no value. What do we talk about? You know, like one CEO said, I never realized that remote workers, I can get rid of them by just uh, deactivating their outlook. Exactly. In a minute, you can lose that job. And, and again, it just goes back to the turnover. Yeah. But I find it very paradoxical uh, because I've tried to uh, place a couple of people in companies in uh and again, the work situation right now is you almost have to know somebody inside the company that can get you an interview with the right person that's going to make the decision. But again, there's a shortage of talent. Companies are suffering right now from a shortage of talent and retention of talent because they're going to quit on you. I had one a gentleman that I had a discussion this morning with. He says that he's working with a company uh, trying to help him recruit that he says that They'll hire people, and after a month, they just walk away. <laughs> they never come back. That's probably why we're being replaced with AI. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just go ahead and replace us all. If AI ever uh, learns to make coffee, that's it. They're, <laughs> they're in the office. I know, AI husbands and everything. Exactly. AI spouses and wives. No, I'm just joking. But no, th these are some just ve very valid points. And what can the people and listeners do, all these organizations that are struggling, Victor? What do we do? They can bring us in to do a needs assessment to really understand the problems that you're facing with, whether it's your recruitment. It's like, how are you recruiting? What is your messaging? Uh, one recent study, Vicky, that I, I, uh, I read uh, suggested that your social media presence needs to be such that companies, uh, that employees or job candidates will want to work there. Because if, if, if your social media footprint gives off a vibe that you really don't care about employees, they're going to check you out. 
They're going to check you out uh, just like a, a an employer can Google you. Employees, employee, potential employees are going to do a search on social media for your company. And again, what is your uh, projection? What is your image? What is your message? You know? So it's a it, a it it's a two-edged sword. Oh, I agree. I so listeners, uh, be sure and keep us in mind if you're struggling with these kinds of issues with recruitment, with retention of talent, with keeping employees motivated and engaged. That's what Vicky and I do. We have been in corporate America. We've held positions uh, where we were uh, HR uh, managers, where we were uh, consultants in the past to companies, and now we are doing it together. Two Vicks are better than one, right, Vic? Absolutely, absolutely. And so what we want to do is be that connection, be that bridge for your organization uh, we do team building, work with your um, employees on stretch management, along with your managers as well. We want to we want to fill that execution gap, and we ex uh, we escalate your performance. Absolutely, we fill the gaps and we escalate your performance. So remember, uh, friends, the psychology of performance. Keep us in mind next time you have a meeting about what to do, how, where to find solutions for the human element, the human factor. We've got the experience. We got the goods. Visit us on we at weescalate.com. Yes. And be sure and book your uh, next session with us. Absolutely. Is that enough show, Vicky? That is enough show. That's going to do it, my friends. Until next time, go out and have a great week. <laughs>